I love to welcome everybody back to the Independent Investor Channel for the weekly highly on update. It's been uh, fairly uh, uh, light on the landscape here as appropriate coming into earnings week for quarter two. So bring your attention to that. It'll probably be a, a split release the same way that they do it Tuesday, Wednesday, but eagerly um, awaiting any uh, any updates on the company um, on that. So put that on your calendars. I say that it's been uh, fairly light on the landscape as the company is in quiet period prior to the earnings call. However, I thought that there was a piece of content that was released this week that fell on deaf ears. Um, I, I think that the market has um, ridden highly on off to the point that good news when it's released is absorbed by the market and does not move the needle. Um, I think this is a fallacy. I, I think this is an error uh, on behalf of an imperfect stock market to not give proper credit to the Carno um, piece that was released this week. Now, if you are uh, an avid follower of the message, uh, a follower of the Hylion story, uh, and has watched the story evolve we know that on the Q1 call and the transcript from this year, Carno stationary power was expected to generate revenue in 2024. It's a one-liner. If you missed it, I'm telling you it's out there. Go check it in this transcript summary at the top of the page. You'll see that very declaration, which I think is fascinating. For those of you guys that are keeping score, 2024 is right around the corner. What other milestone do we have in 2024 that we've earmarked uh, for quite some time now for Hylion? Uh, and that is to move from pre-commercial stage to some level of commercialization. Now, do I anticipate 2024 to be a barn burner? I don't. I sure don't. I'm going to set the stage for people who are pot potentially new to the message. I, I typically do longer discussion videos on Hylion. I'm not one of those guys that's going to come on and hype you up on the 10 attributes of the company uh, to have you trip and fall uh, inadvertently into a company that I'm very bullish on, have extreme fundamental uh, uh, conviction on based on what they're trying to do. But to sell somebody on a stock that doesn't understand the story, um, only to be disappointed six months down the line when this company hasn't materialized in the fashion that they expect it to materialize, this message isn't for you. Um, and I think for those patrons out there that do glean the, the proper value from the message, it really just comes down to chronicling a story. Chronicling a story that by their own admission is not looking to change an industry. They are looking to change the world. And I believe that they have the pedigree to do just that. Now, whether or not they're going to do that at the mass scale that you would have expected six months ago or 12 months ago or 18 months ago, they are progressing at a pace that if you have any doubts at all or have any disappointment in the progress of the company, I would invite you over to the Hylion.com website to take a look at the revamped website. There's been a little bit of criticism, mostly praise for the revamping. Um, I'm absolutely uh, blown away uh, by the website and the historical context uh, that can be placed around this ever-evolving story. Um, by just visiting one website. I think it's fantastic. They've done a great job. Really take you inside, not only behind the doors, what it's like to be a, a highly unemployee, um, what they're working on, the, the exciting uh, innovations that they're bringing to bear. I think those that wanted to understand a little bit more about the story, I don't think there's any more of a better place to look than highlyon.com. The second I will will offer is the bullish share owners uh, group in uh, Facebook. Now, mind you, um, by the name and uh, as it denotes, there's probably a lot of people out there that would like to see the story succeed. So if you're a short seller and or you have a bearish thesis on 
the the story. Um, certainly wouldn't want to discriminate between having different opinions in, in a specific group, um, which I laugh a little bit at that. But to have you you in a, a group like that, just expect that you're probably going to be met with some level of resistance as far as people who uh, have a deep-rooted conviction on seeing the story through. If, if Hylion succeeds, I believe that the world could potentially become a cleaner place, guys. I it's It always amazes me. I used to work in Los Angeles, California. I've been to most every major city in this country, the United States. I just came from abroad. And if you are blinded to what it is that you're seeing, you would not be privy to the constant haze. And I do double down on the constant haze that is currently on the backdrop of every one of our pristine locations around this earth that are populated uh, in any degree or have major transportation systems running through it. And I'm not suggesting one way or another that it's based on global warming. I'm not suggesting at all that it is based on um, uh, uh, pollution that is created by the transportation industry. However, what we are currently faced with is the fact that the transportation industry is the number one polluter on the earth, bar none, hands down. Okay. Well, if it doesn't affect my bottom line, then we're not going to change unless we're forced to change. That's speaking on behalf of the industry that Hylion is looking to penetrate, i.e. the class eight space, right? So if it doesn't affect the bottom line, and there's no initiatives to change, then Ryan's assessment, uh, albeit in the minority as it might be, and not shared as a consensus across people's daily lives and across industries' consensus, that this haze that Ryan talks about is only his uh, a figment of his imagination and is therefore has nothing to do with um, any type of pollution or global warming or any type of uh, uh, scenario or scientific explanation that we can derive here in 2023. I digress. I pose this question to you to get your self-thinking, yet to provoke some thought uh, amongst the share owner community that is is very tight. And I believe that the underlying thread is just that that shouldn't we be doing everything we can possibly do to try to uh, pollute <clears throat> as little as possible or not at all? We have an aging infrastructure that creates electricity in this country and all over the world that is ailing. Um, and we have relied on the convenience of electricity that drives our daily lives up and down. And we have done so at the expense of the economy, excuse me, the, the environment. And I think people would come back to me and say, yeah, maybe that's a little hard over. Maybe the earth has another, you know, 50 million, 50 billion years left on it. And there, therefore, we can just continue to abuse and 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 use the earth to our um, to our credit. For the people who live on the earth now, have no obligation whatsoever to look forward to the future generations that um, have not come into this world to enjoy um, the fruits of what it is that we have enjoyed. But I do notice the things that I share openly with you, and that haze is something that I cannot help but share with you. I'm in one of the most powerful cities in the United States of America, if not in the world. And when I drive the Verrazano Bridge, I am nary a, 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 a encouraged when I look to the city skyline and see a clear day. Is that based on road transportation pollution? I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just a small fry. But when we look at what Hylion is looking to do, every unit that is put out there 
against a backdrop of being the number one polluter on the earth and actually has the potential to run in the same capacity as diesel, right? But in a net carbon negative profile, that to me from an investor investor's perspective is extremely attractive. Now, I am a money motivated fella. I know there will be a certain number of units that will be necessary to be sold uh, to cover CapEx. And when I look at that looming $130 million of annual cash burn for Hylion, it seems monumental. When we're talking about a, a, a Hylion young company that's going to emerge from 2023 with just around $10 million of, of sales annually. We'll caveat the 10 million in 2023 as being a commercial pre-commercial state, not commercial. Okay. And I want you to think about that. I want you to think about the company that has grown, evolved to a place now that we understand in 2023 that has been stuck in what I have deemed to be the ice age. I could be a little bit nicer about it and call it a transition type of phase, but I don't think we're at the transition phase yet. I, I think we will enter into a more of kind of a ramp up stage as we emerge from this ice age period of very anemic numbers, getting the settlings at the company in line, um, management team in place, uh, connections and education piece out of the way. Um, everything that is necessary through uh, proof of concept and product validation, which I anticipate them coming to the final stages of that here in the near term. Hopefully we get some color on that on the, the 2Q call. But I think when we look at Ileon, we need to prepare ourselves mentally and we can do so in the calm of our discussion per week for those of you who join me every week for the discussion it is worth preparing our minds for uh, an eventual emergence from this uh, cold period that i feel like hylion has been immersed on for quite some time it's been pretty fun huh yeah it's been encouraging huh discouraging perhaps um driven me to challenge the transparency through twitter uh, directly at Hylion with regard to allowing the stock price to slip into oblivion um, with no real acknowledgement to when that would potentially end, no real acknowledgement to perhaps maybe them um, aligning operations with their cash burn, as John Panzer talked about on the Q1 call. No real inevitable acknowledgement to um, the slowing of that cash burn. In other words, I get the impression that Hylion believes that um, everything is ops normal and, and all is a go. And it, and it may be, it may not be. Um, to their credit, it's their job to drive on as if everything is hunky-dory. Um, when in fact, the looming bearish attributes of the company are still looming large in the lens of the stock market, i.e. a recessed stock price that would have the company valued less than current cash holdings. So as we speak now calmly and looking at for the bullish share owners that have watched this company evolve to where we are, setting up for the potential to emerge from this uh, plateauing stage that the company has been in, and potentially entering into a, a more commercially uh, vibrant environment for the company. I want to prepare you guys for this eventual ramp up, and we will move from this ice age into an eventual ramp up of the company. And I believe that we are setting up and the stars are aligned. And based on my best fundamental assessment of the pedigree, the very attributes that hold this fabric together, the website, the upper management, the product, the need, um, the incentives and mandates, the everything that goes into making highly on what it is now, 
my best fundamental assessment on this company, when I look at it with my lens, I have a hard time imagining this com company failing. With all of the things that I see, with all of the optics that are available to me, I've shared those optics for you. And I expect nothing less for you to go and visit those so you can glean your own optic as opposed to have me you know, sell you on a company. I'm just a nobody, okay? I'm certainly not an analyst. I'm a social media influencer who was brought to this opportunity three years ago. And I believe we are on the precipice of greatness. I think the prolonged plateauing period has only allowed people the opportunity to get in on ground floor investing, not normally made possible in the stock market. I think Hylion is an anomaly. I really think it it has provided such a prolonged uh, opportunity uh, to invest in the company that <clears throat> you know it's lulled a lot of people to sleep in thinking that my goodness we're never going to emerge from this plateauing period. I totally disagree. When I look at those pedigrees, those attributes of the company, it's really, really hard for me to imagine that these guys aren't going to make a splash in the industry. Now, is that splash going to be monumental? Is it going to be overnight? Is it going to be thousands of orders turned out? I think we can all agree that that's not possible. What, what I think is probably more possible is for an eventual movement toward uh, integration that is smartly calculated, um, that is built on relationships with customers. And dare I suggest that the vital attribute to that ramp up to commercialization is going to take time. For me, guys, to give you some insight, I don't ever envision my portfolio not having highly on in it. I'm willing to comp own the company now, lean as it might be, and I'm willing to own the company fat down the line. As the years go by, I expect wholeheartedly to be looking at a completely different company five years from now. We'll be in it eight years of public markets. I know a lot of people want to scrutinize and say that Hylion was incepted in 2015, and technically that might be true. But my goodness, the last three years is only the last three that I give the company real, real credit for as far as accelerating the dream that was incepted in 2015 when the original idea for Hylion was released. So if you want to somehow sit back and suggest that the company is eight years old and to judge that on the merits that... They're still pre-commercial. They're not commercial yet. Sales are anemic. You know, transparency is a little dry right now. Then that's your prerogative to do so. I just choose to look at it with a little more of a split lens in that in the uh, initial onset years of the company, things were moving at a snail's pace. Right now, things are accelerating to a point of real excitement and dare i suggest i think they're knocking on the door to something that is yes unknown i i can't tell the future but i think they've set themselves up to put themselves in the best position to really make a splash here in 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 an industry that needs this solution is it for the reason that i suggest that there's haze on the horizon everywhere hell i don't i don't know i think the deeper fundamental question to ask yourself is is the world better off with a solution like this or without um you know is this company destined for financial insolvency will they be taken up for pennies on the dollar um you know will highly there's been some incredible speculation out there about how this company could end up in its two to three billion dollar market cap where i think in the short term is very possible to get this thing up to mid cap status where I think it 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 should very well be. Uh, I think they need to be turning in at least a minimum of fifty million dollars of of revenues uh, and and probably for flirting with that six figure revenue figure. Um, excuse me, the the hundred million dollar uh, revenue figure, but. I, I think before we get to that end, I think we 
truly need to understand that we are kind of emerging from a time that has been fairly lean and keep our eyes to the horizon as to where I think we may be potentially going. So for the share owners, for the viewership of the channel, I, I would encourage you to look at 2023, which I think inadvertently, I would have rather not had the $10 million cap. I think I would have rather just, you know, been pleasantly surprised that, um, that, you know, we made 10 million for 2023. I, you know, as, as secretive as they are on certain pieces of information, MSRP, OEM progress, et cetera. I, I really wish the company hadn't have put out the 10 million uh, revenue cap because now the market can look at it and say, "Well, there you go. We're we're right. Um, we're valuing this company at anev anemic revenues, and there you go. They've just declared that they expect ten million for the year's end." But um, that's just me. Um, it's not an earth shattering release if they're trying to be transparent and say, "Hey, this is our target for the year. So be it." But you know, unfortunately, it kind of puts another year in the in the back uh, of the rearview mirror. And here we are just starting August. And we've got some serious, many more months to go through before we even get out of 2023. Uh, with that said, hopefully we have some, some marked progress and we enjoy some milestones along the line. But um, if past performance or at least short-term past performance is any indication of how we'll finish 2023 my expectations are fairly muted to negative um i i want to talk a little bit about the idea that hylion has come to public markets and has has struggled in the eyes of the stock market it's made marked progress as far as the company goes but i think we are missing something I think we are missing the reality that we have been talking about a company for the last three years that has not, and I do double down on, not been a commercially viable company. Where are the orders? Where is this? Where is that? Where is what is and what is the sales team doing? What is the OEM progress? What is this? And that, Thomas Healy, please tell us. We have been talking about a pre-commercial company for the last three years. Hate to chalk it up that way. That's the truth. A pre-commercial company. If we had an order next week for a thousand orders from uh, from from Acme Company uh, for Hylion, what would it mean post-announcement from pre-announcement of a thousand orders, twenty-five hundred orders? The reason why I suggest that is it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. This time that's been allotted to Hylion to strategically allocate those first few build slots to strategically place them in the hands to make the most impact across the broadest fleet uh, penetration could end up being a very, very positive sign for the company and their ability to integrate smartly to the to the fleets okay but here's the thing hylion has always boasted to be a company that they have a solution now and not in five years now if we were to look at the company now and get all excited about a 2500 hyper truck order split between a you know a carno iteration or a hydrogen fuel cell iteration and maybe a, a compressed natural gas uh, type of application what does that actually mean for the company at this point in its inability to deliver on that promise okay i want to delineate for you what we have been discussing for the last three years in Hylion being a, a pre-commercial company and inevitably stepping into a place that they are not at yet. They are not at yet. Will they? The answer is yes. We have an inevitable, inevitable milestone of this company shifting from pre-commercial preparation to commercially viable. Does that change the face? Does it change the dynamic? Does it change the impact 
of potentially taking in orders and being able to deliver on that promise along an expected timeline for customers. Does it change the value of the company? Does it change the perspective on a Hylion that boasts a solution that can put that solution into rigor immediately? Does it change the dynamic of a Hylion in the face of incentives and mandates that will be required to be complied with? And companies, I think, are a little bit more hungry than they're being given credit for to actually seek out those solutions and put those solutions to work. That's just my thought. It's just my thought. I don't think all companies out there are as bad as we say that they are polluting the environment at everybody's expense for their bottom line profit. I think a lot of companies actually uh, have their eyes wide open. Uh, certainly want to be strategic about their decision making and not jump on board prematurely with a company, i.e. Hylion, that is pre-commercial in nature. What good comes out of that? What good comes out of declaring their loyalty to a company like Hylion that um, is pre-commercial, um, is suffering in the eyes of the stock market based on potentially that pre-commercial state? Why jump on board prematurely? And my friends, I want to bring it home by posing this point to you in that this emergence from the ice age in the commercial pre-commercial proof of concept, winter testing and validation, summer testing, et cetera, et cetera. Once that does subside and we enter into a commercially viable opportunity, I'm looking at a 2024 as a potential catalyst year. And that catalyst could mean at the end of 2024, if we're able to bring in 25 million bucks, I will be ecstatic, ecstatic. And that revenue generation will come from three different sources. The third, I will not mention, but the two on the top end, especially with hyper truck sales, Thomas Healy has mentioned hundreds of units. Hundreds of units absolutely gets us to that $25 million mark. And the real uh, anomaly in this whole equation is Carno sales for 2024. And again, to double down on the Q1 remark that Carno stationary power is expected to start revenue generation in 2024. Um Boy, oh boy, uh, that's kind of a show me statement. I don't know how the hell they're going to do it. Um, I don't know how they're going to continue on the cash burn and generate the necessary um, the, the necessary uh, product availability um, with their current burn. How, however, it will be for the next couple of years that the Hylion story will be dependent on acknowledge, acknowledging their their cash position as a young company this isn't a multi-billion dollar company guys they don't have hundreds of millions and you know hundreds of billions on the books or whatever you know tens of billions of cash on the book um to you know to to, to make initiatives and have as a buffer but we'll continue to monitor that but I want you guys to truly understand the full circle idea that I have that as long as it has taken three years, I think we're on the precipice of closing down the pre-commercial um, uh, state of Hylion and entering into the initial days of the commercial state. For share owners, that is going to mean understanding that you have weathered the toughest storm um, mark my words, when the company gets up to five, 10, 15 bucks, there's going to be all kinds of selling. There's going to be all kinds of partying and celebrating. And I will calmly be the voice of reason during those times as well. Um, when the company is at 25, 35, 50 and, and, and a hundred and beyond that, I don't really foresee, um, foregoing all of the uh, preliminary work that's been done on Hylion and, and observing my particular portfolio without a Hylion, just because I think the potential is that great. 
Um, do I think that stationary uh, power generating opportunity is big? I do. I do. I own Johnson & Johnson and Home Depot and Proctor for significantly different uh, reasons that I own Hylion. Hylion is a speculative growth. I, I typically don't like to use the word speculative because there's so much about the Hylion story that's not speculative at all. Speculative is synonymous with guessing. And there's so much about the Hylion story that is not speculative at all. I know the Carnot technology is real. I know that the Hypertruck ERX is real. I know that the, whatever partnerships and agreements they have with the OEM Peterbilt uh, with PACCAR, is, they're real. Okay, There's no speculation necessary. The only speculation necessary is, is to suggest that they'll take those attributes, put them together, and somehow down the line turn a profit. That, if anything, is the only speculative aspect of the Hylion story, but I... I <laughs> I don't typically cross my idea of future potential with what I feel like could be going on on a limb with a with a company and its uh, ability or inability to even make it. I think the market would have you believe that Hylion won't make it. But from a perspective of speculation, um, I, I, I Naria put this company and others that I cover in the speculative category because we so we know so much fundamentally about the company that it just becomes an investment, no more, no less. Um, and the investment thesis will play out over time or not. And that's just the nature of investing. Okay. Um, I mentioned a little bit the importance of solving the problem now, and I, I really think this is going to be a theme going forward once Hylion enters into the commercial state. The ability to offer a product that, by, by my best admission, I, I could be getting this thing totally hosed up. But I know there's a lot of people out there that come in and they listen to me talk. And I think I observe a lot of the same things a lot of other people observe about this opportunity. When I look at a Hypertruck ERX and I'm blown away, I am blown away. Okay. Now I love looking at a Peterbilt. <laughs> I, I think they're a work of art. Hylion to me means putting the rigor and technology in the areas of focus and no more right so it's a peterbilt plus same truck same truck all right but you remove you remove the element the pollutant element and you add in the electrified element to the equation to get to a place where i look at um a solution that could be put into rigor now. I cannot for the life of me imagine a, a, a class A trucking space where this isn't attractive. The bears would say I'm wrong. The bulls would say I'm right. Um, I, I, I think to be fair, if I was going to be fair, now I believe my bullish conviction will win out over time, but to be fair, Let's just say that there's an equal opportunity for both of those scenarios, bull and bear, to play out in, in nature. I don't know how the story is going to evolve. Hylion can have the greatest product ever and, and fall on their face based on poor execution. That's the reality of it. Hylion can have the most beautiful product whatsoever um, through the Carnot technology only to have overlooked a critical piece to it and have it not reach the commercial viability state that they envisioned. Product falls in its face, nary it to find its place in the marketplace at any time given down the line, right? The, the, these are realistic things that can play out in nature. Highly on can fumble the delivery of commercialization for the class eight uh, uh, hypertruck ERX, therefore delaying potential sales into the future and, and drawing out the timeline to commercialization um, and affecting future revenues. These are all, all outcomes that could absolutely play out in nature. It's highly on its job to uh, continue to keep the, uh, keep the story pointed North, right? 
um, and make sure that we're limiting those uh, shortcomings as as best as we can as we monitor the story. All right. I've already mentioned the Carno for the distributed power generation. I think this is one of those things that when I look at it from the lens of a fundamental investor, I am absolutely ecstatic to be invested in Carno. Uh, there's going to be people who watch the channel and and they look at it and they say, it's a waste of money. It doesn't work or there's better tech. No problem. Uh, you're entitled to my opinion, just like I am. But I think there's a lot of people out there, um, general electric additive, I might add, that actually believe that Hylion can take this thing and scale it. And I believe that they can. And I'm pleasantly surprised any color that I have on on um, stationary power generation. Why did they come out with the video this week? Why? Was it a primer for the Q2 earnings? I presume that it is. And as we close out Q3, and we step into 2024, which is supposed to be a power generating type of opportunity for Hylion. What we knew two to three years ago with the hybrid solution and what everybody was excited about when EX1 was released, are you not more excited about the prospects of Carno going forward with what we know on, on, on what type of opportunity they can provide uh, by their admission to think about Carno being the primary energy short source for households and using the grid as a backup. What a bold statement. What a bold opportunity to step into power generation uh, for households as opposed to you know what we know about the generac and just sitting there on standby for the um, very rare, situation where the grid has failed to provide constant power to the house, the generac will kick on, et cetera. That's not what Hylion said. Hylion looked at reversing that idea and having uh, independent uh, power generating units supplying all of the power to the home and then using the public supply system as the backup to servicing those homes. I think it's fascinating. Um, is it a pipe dream? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Does Hylion have the technology to make it happen? By their admission, they do. By their admission, historically, that technology that's gone into um, uh, the um, uh, the generator um, technology has been non-existent. And now with the emergence of 3D printing and the emergence of the technology, we actually have this ability to step into an era we, we, where we could start to put some of this um, into work, Hylion being the beneficiary of that as we close down the weekly video, I'll keep this a touch shorter this week anyway. It was a little dry on information, so I really had to sit back. And for me, I, I got really stoked. Whenever I need motivation on Hylion, I always go to Hylion.com and I sift through the website again. And I'm like, man, alive, I just have a hard time believing that this company is not going to do great things. Um, and and I'm, I'm willing to put my money behind it. Uh, for you guys that are looking at the stock price, I'll talk a little stock price right now. Um, at a dollar seventy-two, I'm not buying the stock. Um, I, I did. I, I'm a little bit muted to lukewarm interested in purchasing the stock at this level um, because it's not that far removed of its all-time low at a dollar twenty-five. And I'm hesitant to make that move entering into what I think could be um, proven to me through precedence, uh, uh, still a couple of months of fairly dry news for the company. And who's to suggest that um, uh, it's not going to suffer in the eyes of the stock market over the next coming months, okay? Um, and, and so if those opportunities are, are made possible to me, then I will look to purchase more. I will give you my best consensus. I don't think that that's going to happen. Uh, I've been proven wrong about 38 times on this company with trying to uh, understand how potentially low this company could go. Um, and and my uh, frustration with that is the um, ice age that we have been in. And whether or not that's the fault of Hylion or fault of the situation or just chalked up as being what it is. Um, it's been a rough, a rough go. 
And I'd like to see the stock start on its northward path, get it up to three or four or five, you know, even ten dollars um, would be nice. Once the promise of some of these things starts to come to fruition, and we understand a few more metrics that Hylion has been very close to the vest in releasing, um, then we could potentially understand where we could be going and 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 what the outlook could be for 2024 and beyond. But I want to leave you with this idea. I, I'm going through the website and I'm like, man, alive. I'm I'm remembering some of the just rudimentary cartoonish pictures of the original um, Hylion uh, investor presentation, the original website that they had. Um, and I'm thinking, man, alive, this company has gone through such a transformation from then and to now. And I pose the question, if Hylion just came to public markets now, right, through the rigor of an IPO, knowing what we know now, what what type of, of, of favor would Hylion gain in the stock market? Do you think that they would be um, out of favor, having been mixed up with the, the SPAC craze and um, all of the um, uh, criticism that the, stat, the SPAC era received? for companies coming to public markets that, you know, followed the same predictable trajectory. I, I don't know. I, I look at investing in this company on the onset and I would, I would look at this uh, differentiation. Would I look at it and say, my goodness, with what I know now, and I had no, no acknowledgement to past history or the SPAC era just didn't exist. And we're just now hearing about Hylion for the first time. And Hylion came to public markets and announced that they were listing on the New York Stock Exchange at a dollar seventy-two. Where would the stock go on its first day of trading? Would it go down four cents? Yeah, I, I don't know. The stock market is fickle, and we are not in that reality. But I always try to differentiate. If you knew nothing of the company. And we're placed this opportunity in front of you, not being privy to the past history um, and the mon monumental decrease that the company has been subjected to. Would you look at it with a different lens? And it's always incumbent upon us as investors to continually clean our perspective, run your perspective through the dishwasher every single night, come to the table with a fresh perspective, still understand what you know, uh, what you own and what you know. And where potentially what you know could materialize into something into the future. Um, this, I don't really consider speculation. I just consider it analytical thought. And we all have the ability to do that. Um, I'm not suggesting take your entire nest egg and put it into this company. It certainly does fit into the category of high risk. It certainly does fit into the category of potentially ultra growth. Uh, ultra aggressive and 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 really in an emerging industry we need a lot more color on um how much acceptance in the industry highly on can garner going forward uh, and i think that's going to be where my focus is as i review the transcript from the call uh, and list through the, the earnings call as well next week we'll do our reaction video to the q2 earnings uh hopefully it's positive again my um my outlook for the Q2 is in line with what I have uh, traditionally entered into uh, the last significant many quarters, um, and that is fairly low expectations for the Q2 call. But uh, it is it is coming Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, it'll be fun to hear what they have as far as an update. Uh, keep your perspective in check and understanding that it is just a quarterly call. Um, it's not the end all, a be all, unless they come onto the call and say that they're closing doors. That'll be a that'll be too bad. I don't expect that. I expect uh, positive news and an outlook for the remainder of 2023 and 2024. Guys, I appreciate you tuning into the message. I really do. Thank you for sticking with the movement. Um, the community chronicling of the Highland story. I'm glad to do it. I'm just the guy to do it. Uh, it's uh, been been an awesome project of mine. It'll be great to see this thing to fruition. Sometimes it takes a lot more time than what you had initially expected. No problem. I'll devote as much time into this project 
as I understand that time really is an in, irrelevant attribute in measuring um, a successful time frame of a company like this that just needs time to materialize and, and really show us what they can do. Guys, I appreciate you. Subscribe to the channel if you like the message. Leave your comments at the bottom of the video. Please do so. It always generates a nice conversation on this topic, guys. I appreciate you tuning in for the totality of the message. And as always, good luck in your investment future. <music>